Great. That looks great. Okay, well, thank you, Christine. And again, just to let everyone know, this session is being recorded. And welcome everyone to our opening day for Best Workplaces for Commuters. Uh, it's June 1st, uh, first day of the month, and it's the opening day uh, for applications. So we're excited to celebrate and bring this great webinar to you today with some really exciting presentations. So today's program, I'll be providing some introductions. I'll give a, a brief overview of best workplaces and some exciting news we have. And then I'll turn the time over to our two speakers. We have Marcus Moore from Fairfax County Commuter Services and Maria Lassinger from Grove Slade. And so I will be introducing them uh, right before their presentations. So today is opening day. So I'm looking at our list of attendees and many of you are Best Workplaces for Commuters members. So you'll be renewing, but I can see we have some new uh, faces and some of you may be first timers for Best Workplaces for Commuters. So the application period for our 2024 list is open now from June 1st through November 30th of this year. So you have plenty of time to get your application ready and submit it before the deadline. And this is for the 2024 list release, which we will announce on at the end of January in 2024. I know that sounds like a long uh, ways away, but it will come around very quickly. And so we released uh, our largest list uh, in January of this year. And so you can, Florida members and partners can apply anytime, but that is open for uh, nationwide and in Canada for uh, applications to be submitted. So our membership includes four different categories. You can apply as a best workplaces and receive that designation, and that's for an employer. So any type of employer, large or small. So if you only have a couple of employees or if you have thousands of employees, you can still apply for that designation. We have a best sites designation and best sites is for multi-employer developments. So if you're at a, for example, at a shopping mall, or if you have a business campus with multiple employers, that's the designation you can apply for. We have best universities, and we added a new uh, category for colleges, so they have their own logo now. So it's the same category and application, uh, but we listened to feedback from our customers. And so now we have a best universities and a best colleges. We also have our best partners category, and you'll be hearing from one of our best partners today. So those are uh, people and entities from across the nation and Canada who are partnering with us. They are working with employers. They are utilizing all of our resources, and they are working with uh, the different categories to help them with their application and to give some even added recognition. I wanted to do a, a special thank you and shout out to our BWC partner organizations. Uh, this is our current list and we have, it, it's growing. This week, I wanted a shout out to Go Ithaca. We, they joined as a partner this week. And so we have new partners uh, coming on all the time. You can see they represent many different states. And so we're excited to work with our partners. It's free to sign up as a partner organization. It only takes a few minutes uh, if you go online and fill out that form and you can become one of our partnering best workplaces for commuters organizations. And you do receive benefits for that and you will uh, be named to uh, on our website on the partner list also. And you've heard me mention Canada. And so we're very excited that uh, this is new. Uh, we have just opened up BWC in Canada. And so this is a slide from our first partner in Canada, Point A, and we've been working uh, with them. So you can see their team and also a little bit about Point A. They're a nonprofit that envisions sustainable transportation options for everyone. They were established in 2001 and they were the first transportation management association in the province of Ontario. And so we'll be working with them to establish best workplaces in Canada. And as I said, today's opening day, June 1st. So usually we 
get a few applications maybe in a week or so. But today we received an application already. It's our first application and it came from someone in Canada uh, working with point A. So we're excited that we had our first applicant. It was a best site. And so, and it, so we just wanna really uh, give a shout out to them and thank you for being our new partner. And don't forget, we have two really great online guides. We have a partner guide that goes through everything. Uh, it's for partners, but also if you're an employer or, or a best site, you may wanna uh, scroll through the guide. Uh, it talks about how to renew. So it's a really great free guide that we have a link to in your members only section. And then one of the benefits is our commuter benefits guide, and that's for employers. And so that is online and we update that frequently whenever it is needed. So that is another really great benefit for our best workplaces. So I wanted to mention the two guides that we'll be updating again this uh, year. And now for what you've all been waiting for, uh, we are going to have our presentations. So I'll go ahead and introduce Marcus and Maria. And then I'm going to turn the time over to Marcus and he'll present first, followed by Maria. So a little bit about Marcus. I've known Marcus for over 10 years. I mean, we've been working with Fairfax County and they have been just such a great partner. And I get to go back to DC uh, typically once a year for their big ceremony that I know Marcus has some photos from. Um, he's the current Transportation Demand Management Liaison Program Manager for the Fairfax County Commuter Services Outreach Team. He successfully worked with businesses within Fairfax County, Virginia over the last 18 years to implement high-level trip reduction strategies and policies to enhance recruitment and retention efforts. He also maximizes commuter alternative options. And during his time, he's fostered productive business relationships with multiple organizations, commissions, chambers, and board. And we really love working with Marcus and his team in Fairfax County. And I know you're gonna enjoy his presentation. And then he's gonna turn the time over to uh, a Best Workplaces for Commuters member, uh, an employer. And Maria Lassinger is a principal at Gaurav Slade with over 18 years of experience working in Fairfax County and the surrounding towns and cities. Maria oversees projects and staff from the headquarters office in Fairfax. As a talented engineer and industry leader, Maria has garnered a reputation as a leader within and outside of the organization. Through her commitment to her clients, the professional development of her team, and our industry, she embodies the firm's mentality that success is shared. So with that, I will turn the time over to you, Marcus, for your presentation. And I did want to mention that we will have uh, questions at the end, but feel free to also type questions in anytime in the Q&A box, and we'll look at answering those throughout and then also at the end. So we hope you have some great questions for our speakers. Okay, Marcus, I'll turn the time over to you. All right. I thank you for that, um, you know, lovely in, uh, invite for inviting me in and, and having me on your, your webinar today. I'm so excited to be here just to talk to you about our program and how we've been able to establish a partnership with Julie and her team for a number of years. As Julie mentioned, I've been with the uh, Fairfax County Community Services team for about 18 years now. Um, I've had the pleasure of doing TDM and learning so much about the programs and how we can help different commuters in our area for a number of years. And also I had the pleasure of building myself up from the, the boots on ground level, being a uh, lead employer outreach specialist, where I was able to work with individual employers, build those relationships, help to um, help them create TDM packages, which would allow them to help, the, help their staff get to work a little bit easier. Um, and fortunately, working myself up now to where I'm the program manager now, and I get to share that experience with my team members and um, different colleagues in Fairfax County. Um, over the years, we, we, we wanted to figure out different ways where we can celebrate our employers. Um, for all of you TDM folks, I'm sure that there is a number of regional and national programs that are out there that you can use as a way to recognize your employer efforts. Um, in 2010, we tried to figure out a different way where we can put a, a different spin on our program that we had a little bit more control over. Um, there's a couple of different uh, regional awards that we would normally take advantage of in the region here, um, but we were kind of limited to the amount of different folks that we can kind of nominate for the award just due to our region where we are uh, closely affiliated with those TDM folks in Maryland as well as DC. And we we identified the BWC and Cutter, the Cutter team as a way to reach out and create a local promotion 
as I said, that we have a little bit more control over. Um, for the TDM implementation that we do, we have a status of criteria of when we are working with different employers where we measure the different TDM strategies that are in place. And we looked at the applications that were in place for the BWC awards, and it measured up perfectly like a hand in, hand in glove fit to what we were doing. So we reached out to their staff and we just kind of coordinated different ways that we can kind of partner and uh, build up each other's programs. And we came up with our regional promotion uh, for the BWC awards within Fairfax County. Um, just to tell you a little bit of how that program works, um, in our TDM field, we're constantly looking for different incentives, different ways that we can encourage different employers to take advantage of these different opportunities, whether they're teleworking, transit subsidies, um, flex scheduling, as well as working with the commuters to identify different ways that they can commute to work. Here in Fairfax County, we're one of the largest uh, populated counties in Virginia. So that, of course, comes with a, a great deal of traffic congestion and different things that we are trying to help people solve in regards to commuting to work. Fairfax County happens to be a location where we have a number of different individuals that are commuting cross jurisdictional. So we run into situations where we have to work on a case by case situation to identify each company that we work with and, and figure out what their needs are and to help them alleviate those concerns and getting people to work and identifying ways that we, we can create a tailored package for that um, situation. So one of the things that we did is just to tell you a little bit about our particular BWC promotion with the funding that we have when we're looking at different ways to incentivize people to implement TDMOs, we identified incentivizing the BWC application process, which is a, you know, for a small cost, we can recognize our employers that have worked with us throughout the years to kind of give them a thank you for the things that they've done just to implement TDM strategies. And it allows us to help sell and, you know, kind of promote what they've been doing during our time uh, in working with them. Next slide, please. So uh, on this slide here, it just talks about some of the different regional programs and resources that we have access to throughout Fairfax County. As I mentioned, we have a number of different people that are, com uh, that are commuting cross jurisdictions. So we have to identify different ways where people can take the most efficient trip uh, to get back and forth to work. So we have a number of different transit as well as uh, van pool access, as well as different uh, Metro rail and, um, and train access to get folks from point A to point B. And one of the things that we do, we have a client base of about 14,000 um, companies that we work with over the years. And in that, we've reached a point where we will kind of identify which, which companies will be able to, you know, be able to reach that program package level where, to where they will be um, able to be nominated for the BWC award. So these are just some of the regional programs that we use as a way to kind of let people know what programs are out there, what sources that they can use to get um, as the most to get to, to, to their jobs from point A to point B. Uh, next slide. Uh, the BWC recognition is, is really important for our team. We found great success in the excitement of getting employers uh, this recognition because it brings a bit of local, local recognition as well as the national recognition that comes along um, with the program that's set in place with Julie and her team. So what we tried to do is just try to identify, again, we go into a employer location, we will assess their site, we figure out what those needs are for that company, whether it be bike racks, whether it be transit subsidy programs, whether it be preferred parking locations, whatever that situation um, kind of requires to, to, to meet that criteria, we help them to put those programs in place. Or if it's a situation where we engage with the client and we find out that they are currently doing these things, but maybe our team is not aware of it, we help them to kind of figure out different ways where we can promote those programs and increase participation in those strategies so that they can reach the criteria level. And then our outreach team will go in and they'll let those folks know that they're eligible to be nominated for this award. We'll help them complete the application process. It's a pretty simple and straightforward process where we can, we can bring them in and get nominated. And then each year at the end of the year, we'll bring those folks in front of the uh, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, which is a great way to recognize those folks at that level and get them in front of our, uh, our board staff just to receive their nomination and just to kind of get the word out about the things that they're doing to help alleviate congestion within Fairfax County. Next slide, please. So here you have a couple of different logos from a couple of the companies that we work with. Um, again, as a large part of our promotion, we pay for a membership for the BWC application, which we, we cover for a two year period uh, for companies that do participate uh, two concurrent years. And we work with them to kind of, again, get recognition, which comes with the local and national side of things. And then from that, there's also a number of different 
um, special perks that are, are in place for being a BWC member, which we found that over the years, companies have been pretty excited um, in taking advantage of, such as the networking opportunities, different um, help desks, and different um, events and uh, other internal awards that are kind of catered to just BWC applicants. Um, one of the things that we're so excited about is uh, in the beginning stages, we didn't really know what the expectations would be for this program. Again, it kind of mirrored everything that we were doing as far as the TDM organization, as far as how we consider a top level TDM implementation program. And it mirrored up to the application process that BWC had in place. And we came into a point where we were able to recognize our first 100 um, awardees in a nine year period. Um, I would say over the years, we've averaged about 10 awardees per year. Some years we reached a level of 17 awardees, which I think was our highest point to date. And we're just pretty excited about the way that we can engage with employers and just kind of, you know, give them, give them a pat on the back for the things that they're doing. Next slide. Um, coming forward, I think we're coming into our 13th year of promotion. And again, we're coming up on 150 Best Workplaces awardees. Now, these, these awardees will be a mixture of individual companies that have reached the BWC designation, as well as what we consider the uh, best sites where we work with property management that have had uh, different strategies in place, such as TDM shuttles, uh, on-site amenities, and a number of different other strategies in place where we will work with them and recognize them as the best site. With that best site designation, it also provides the opportunity for any companies that are at that location to be able to take advantage of the BWC application process and some of the strategies that are in place and they're able to use those uh, strategies for their application and they come in as a BWC applicant at a reduced rate. Next slide. Um, here we have a couple of pictures of some of the award ceremonies that we've had. Again, we were pretty excited to get those folks in front of the board. That was one of the major draws to uh, you know, having those folks come in and receive their recognition in front of our county board. Um, Julie has been uh, very, very big as far as our process in traveling down from Florida to come help us out and recognize our awardees. She, she's taken the trip from Florida a number of different times as she's mentioned. Um, so we're just kind of excited about different ways that we can kind of highlight their, their activities and different things that we can do to bring them to re receive that nomination and, and just, kind of, just to highlight the different packages that they have in place. Next slide. So one of the things that we have recently incorporated was trying to get the word out on social media about different things that these, these different companies are doing. So these things include just promoting their strategies on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and we're also taking the, taking the opportunity to go and do a number of different um, testimonials from each of those companies just to kind of highlight some of their, their internal packages and things that they consider to be of importance to their company. Um, you know, we, we take a lot, of, a lot of pride in working with these employers and, and putting the focus more so on the things that they consider to be important. I think as a TDM outreach specialist, that was one of the things that I focused on the most versus identifying what it is that I wanted them to do. It was a very important for me to go on board and figure out what their needs were. And I think for you know any of those folks that are TDM folks on, on, on the call here today, I think you know you, you might share some of those same experiences. There, there's ultimately a great deal of a sales component to what we do as far as everything that we wanna share, all the excitement that we have about helping the people to figure out different ways to commute and, and, and easing their, their congestion issues. I think it's important to identify what the needs are on their part and, and put a large focus on that. And then I think wrapping things up at the end of our promotion is the recognition portion and just giving them, again, a thanks for everything that they've done, uh, just showing them how important that they are to us as clients and allowing them to get their shine for the different things that they've implemented during, their, during that relationship period. Next slide. Um, one of the things that, again, to wrap things up on my side of things, I, I wanted to, to stress for those folks that are potentially interested in being a TDM partner partner organization. Julie, uh, Christine, and Phil Winters, her, their team has been great, you know, the entire 13 year period that we've had this partnership from, again, you know, coming out and being part of our award situations or, you know, even down to the small things as far as, you know, constantly being able to be able to, uh, you know, give a quick response on situations when we're dealing with last minute preps to get the awards uh, ready all the way down to sending materials on a timely, uh, timely uh, manner. It's just a situation where we can really depend on them. And, and I've had such a great experience in, uh, in this partnership. And I would encourage anybody that is looking to maybe, you know, implement this, this, this type of situation into your, into your program, I would, I would highly encourage it. And I think it's an ideal way to 
to recognize your clients and to you know continue to build in that relationship moving forward. And with that, I want to pass it over to Maria Lassinger, who is one of the uh, representatives of one of our uh, recent clients who has received the BWC awards. Uh, we're really excited about their nomination, and I'm looking forward to you know having Maria explain to you all what value that Garo Slade has found in working with the BWC promotion and how it has benefited their company. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Marcus. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully that screen share popped up all right for everyone. Um, but as was mentioned, I'm Maria Lashinger. I'm a principal with Grove Slate Associates. I'm very excited to be here this afternoon with everyone to celebrate this year and the upcoming best workplaces for commuters. Um, I'm just going to start with a brief introduction of our firm, uh, our internal TDM strategies, some of the work that we do with our clients. And then there's been a lot of questions, I think, lately about return to office trends. So I'll talk a little bit about what we've been seeing and what we've been sharing with our clients. So on Grove Slade, uh, we were founded 44 years ago in Washington, DC by Fred Grove and Lou Slade. Uh, we're now actually headquartered across the river in Fairfax County, and we employ over 50 transportation planners and engineers. Uh, transportation is our specialty and our focus is the movement of people, right, by all modes of transportation. Um, as professionals, we understand the responsibility of getting people where they want to be. Um, is it to, to work in school in the morning, right, to your daughter's soccer game in the afternoon? Um, we understand how transportation does factor into your well-being. And our goal is to always do the right things to help better the quality of life for, for everybody. Uh, we are advocates, right, first and foremost for our clients and for our communities, right? We pride ourselves in our strong relationships that we have built over the last four decades. Uh, we work hard every day to maintain and enhance those relationships. Um, at the forefront of everything that we do is a, a mindset of, of multimodal design. Um, we, let's see, sorry about that. We go, oh my gosh, sorry, my screen just, just flaked. I apologize. Can you still see that slide? <gasps> Good to go? All right, sorry about that. Uh, on the next one here, I'll just share a little bit of the comprehensive services. Um, these are some of the services that we provide. I will talk more a little bit about our TDM services here uh, in just a minute. Um, the majority of our work does center around transportation studies um, of all sorts. We work with public and private clients. We do large scale campus master planning, parking analyses, a lot of design plans. Um, our work is extremely varied. We work on small scale gas stations out in rural areas, uh, up to multi-million square foot urban mixed use developments and frankly everything in between. So we're currently serving our clients today out of five offices. Um, we are in DC and Virginia, and we just opened up our very first office in Maryland in Montgomery County. Um, our work, while it's primarily centered in the DMV, uh, we do help our clients wherever they are and wherever they need our help. So as transportation professionals, we practice what we preach. Um, take a couple, couple minutes here, walk through our internal TDM plan and, and what that looks like. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we are headquartered in Fairfax County, Virginia. We are a, a member of the Fairfax County TMA. Uh, we offer our employees discounted bike share memberships, and all of our offices have secure bike facilities with lockers and showers. Um, our offices are transit accept accessible, and we do participate in a pre-tax commuter benefit program. So we recently consolidated two of our Virginia offices into our larger headquarters space, and a big factor that went into that choice of location was the chance to take transit and the location's non-auto accessibility. Um, honestly, all of our offices were chosen uh, because they're all highly accessible um, by all modes. And accessibility really is a, an important criteria for our firm. So we recently earned Go DC Go's Platinum Transportation Ambassadors designation uh, in the District of Columbia, which is given to employers with robust commuter benefits and comprehensive non-auto programs. You know, the, some of the benefits that I mentioned on the last slide or just some of those criteria that were required for that award. Um, our offices all offer on-site amenities, specifically where I sit in Fairfax. Uh, we have a convenience store here on the first floor of our building. And during the, the lunch hours, the building actually brings in food trucks so that folks don't have to go out and drive during the day. Uh, the, the food trucks are very heavily utilized. It's one of, one of our employees' favorite perks here. Uh, we have a city guide that we have refined over the years that we give to each of our new hires. Um, that guide outlines how we get to the office, what's around here, um, as well as a lot of personal recommendations from our employees uh, of the best places to eat or shop, um, with their favorite parks, uh, their favorite entertainment nearby. Um, it's, a, it's been a really helpful, for, especially for folks who are moving to the DC area for the first time, um, how to get around. I think that, that guy has definitely been appreciated by all of our new hires as of late. Um, we encourage healthy initiatives. 
Uh, just yesterday was the last day of May. We wrapped up our May Mile Challenge. Um, every year we celebrate our firm's anniversary by walking, running, and biking 100 miles for every year that we've been in business. So this year our goal was 4,400 miles firm-wide. We actually crushed that goal this year. Uh, we have a lot more people, which has been nice, but we finished at just over 6,200 miles by 49 participants. I say a lot of those miles that we were able to rack up were from biking and walking to work. Uh, we do also have electric vehicle charging stations in all of our offices. Um, so not all of our employees even own vehicles, but of those that do, um, a good number of them are electric vehicles. I think we have a picture of Kevin there on our screen, plugging in his car for free at our Fairfax office. Um, I would say though, the biggest strategy um, that's utilized by our employees is our uh, alternative work schedule. Um, our employees have the, office, the option to, to work from home up to two full days per week. You know, on the days when we are in the office, we can flex our hours. So we can start the day from home, come in for our core hours after the morning rush, leave then again before the evening rush and finish our workday at home. Um, communication has been key uh, for all of our employees through the alternative work schedules. You know, just because we don't see you at your desk doesn't mean you're not available. Uh, different types of communication, you know, that does show up in different ways. Um, we have a Monday morning coordination meeting. There's a, a screen capture there on the screen. Uh, that day, there were 10 of us in a conference room and then 10 more people all at their own homes. And we, it was very easy. We seamlessly got organized for the upcoming week. I also have a couple of examples on here um, of our, our schedules, right? So even though we're in the office three days per week, most people are not commuting during the peak hours. You know, I, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I get so much more work done in the office, um, but I do flex my schedule so that I'm not adding to the roadway congestion, spending unnecessary time in my car, you know, that is obviously a benefit to my stress levels and the environment. So it's a win-win there for sure. Um, I just want to take the time to say, you know, Best Workplaces for Commuters really does mean a lot to our firm. Um, it's exciting to be able to, to celebrate with like-minded organizations. I'm really looking forward to networking, you know, learning new strategies that we can bring back to our employees and then to our clients so we can help enhance our communities. You know, a big part of our internal TDM program is its adaptive management. And we're continuously refining that plan as we learn from others. So I'm really looking forward to, to being able to do that with this group. Um, you know, I think the VWC designation shows folks just how much we believe in what we do. You know, a lot of what we're doing on a daily basis is getting out and helping others learn about alternative ways to get around in the area, right? And being a best workplace for commuters lets other people know that we're not just talking the talk, but you know, we're also walking the walk here in, in Virginia. Um, I'm also very excited to say a lot of our clients are on the BWC list. So that's exciting to see year over year that the, the people that we're working with um, are excited about it and making the list as well. So we were also recently asked about the application process. Um, honestly, it was fantastic. It, it, was, it was a breeze to apply. Marcus's team, you guys really led the way and, and helped us put our best foot forward. I will say working in transportation every day, we often do take for granted some of the things that we do. And so it, it's appreciated uh, to be acknowledged for doing the things that we consider to be the right thing. You know, it was very easy to apply, very easy to enroll. Uh, specifically in the Smart Benefits 50 Plus program. Um, I know our folks were excited to receive preloaded transit cards um, and some people who have not yet tried to take transit to our office, um, they can and they you know they will now they have they have this preloaded card. Um, so folks are excited about that. So I did want to say thank you, you know, for being a good partner in the process and we are really looking forward to, to that ongoing relationship. So we don't just practice TDM internally. Uh, we also help our clients, right? We help them affect change within their own organizations and in the development and redevelopment work that they're doing out in the communities. Um, we help our clients create TDM plans. We help you know, outline a set of strategies so that they too can reduce their, their peak hour traffic to and from their development sites. Uh, each of those sites is very unique, especially in Fairfax County. We have some urban areas, we have some suburban areas, um, and each one of our clients is also unique. You know, so we customize a set of strategies that make sense based on what their goals are for their employees or the residents, you know, maybe it's their students or the general public, right? Again, it's all about that movement of people. Um, we also help implement their selected strategies. So we do a lot of implementation. We help monitor the program's effectiveness once that's up and running. We will help conduct surveys, traffic counts, and then we do make comparisons back to, to their goals, to the county's prescribed goals. Um, so if, if those goals are not being met, then we go back and we help tweak the program. You know, we work with uh, the TDM folks at Fairfax County, and we all work together to make sure that 
each program is successful. Right? We are long-term partners in this, and we have a shared interest in, in our clients meeting their goals. Um, so right again, we, we are advocates for our communities. We, we live where we work, and we do work where we live. So as part of those project teams, we're out attending a lot of community meetings, um, helping answer a lot of questions about multimodal transportation. Now, I'd say that on any given day, we'll have growth slate engineers and planners. We are out in DC, you know, advocating for maybe safe routes to school. Uh, we're in Alexandria, where we're working with a lot of industry groups as the, the city is revamping their TDM policies. And we're also out and about in Fairfax. Well, you know, we have a new Silver Line Metro Rail extension uh, that is urbanizing historically suburban neighborhoods. So there's a we're doing a lot of outreach and attending a lot of community meetings. You know, I like to think helping people get comfortable, you know, as, as things are urbanizing and changing. Um, really, the, the earlier that we can affect positive change in this land development process, the better. Um, so I say we're, we're really looking forward to this group, uh, you know, continuing to help us stay on top of these best practices. So some of the biggest questions um, that people continually ask us, you know, about traffic specifically, are we back to normal traffic conditions? I, I don't know that we know what that looks like anymore. That's a ever elusive term at this point. Um, people are always asking, you know, about employers and what people are doing in bringing their people back to the office. So I'll just share a couple of high level slides here um, with some data that we've been sharing with our clients recently. So on the screen, um, there's some data from Castle Systems, right? They, op they update their office occupancy on a weekly basis. Um, from what was shown, this is about a week old now though, um, what, it, what it, Texas is leading the nation uh, for metro areas uh, in the return to work, Chicago and New York, New York, both hot on their heels there. Um, so we, we are watching the national trends. We obviously spend even more time focused here on the Washington DC metro area. We have seen a steady, steady but um, very slow, I'd say, to uptick in the last year um, with return to work. You know, everyone is obviously watching the federal government in this area, trying to figure out how that's gonna gonna go. Um, so we're, you know, we are watching, frankly, on a weekly basis what the numbers are looking like. Uh, here, this slide again from Castle shows the highest and the lowest occupied days of the week. Um, it's you can see here that varies widely, right, on the order of maybe 20 to 35 percent on any given day. I'll say. You know, we do see that in our office as well. Um, everyone here is required to be in on Wednesdays for training purposes, committee meetings, and those types of things. So that's obviously our highest occupied day of the week. Uh, Fridays, typically our lowest days, kind of makes sense, especially in the summer. Um, I think we're hovering right around 30% occupied uh, on Fridays right now. So if we dial in to the DC Metro very specifically. So you can see left-hand side, April 2020, the occupancy just fell off that cliff. And it has been slowly rising. You know, this is a what almost three-year period on the screen here, um, and we're definitely not anywhere back to those to late 2019, early 2020 levels. Uh, here's some traffic congestion data that we have uh, from Streetlight. Uh, they're really great about pushing out uh, there's some congestion data, as you can see here um, in the AM and PM rush hours. They're both still slow to rebound uh, to pre-COVID levels. Um, I think though what stands out on the screen to me the most is that the midday traffic is almost fully back to pre-pandemic, right? And so our couple of takeaways from that are, I think people are back in the office, the people who are back in the office are probably going in later, right, than they ever have. And they're also leaving earlier than they ever have before. So the midday traffic is up. Um, I also think a lot of people, when you are working from home, they're doing their errands midday instead of stopping by, you know, and, and having stopping by to the store on the way home. You're just popping out at lunchtime real quick, getting your errands done so that you don't have to be on the roads during the afternoon rush hours. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, what are we seeing? I, I think, you know, we all know we're still in this really strange time here in the world, like where what your commute looks like, how work is getting done is definitely different than ever before. Um, in the DC area, we've definitely seen a big decline in transit use, but we've seen a, a, a significant uptick in telework. So when we're looking at the traffic on the roadways pre and post pandemic, they're almost the same. It's getting back to, to being about the same, but that balance is there. Um, the traffic is a little bit lower, but you know, again, this very well may be our next, our, you know, our new normal here. Um, really, at the end of the day, I think we all know transportation is a critical component of all of our lives, right? It has the potential to affect our well being. Um, we all, I think, have a responsibility to one another to help make it better for everyone. So, you know, our focus here is on our people, it's on people. Um, transportation demand management is about people, and you know, we're excited that the best workplaces for commuters celebrates people. 
So with that, just again, wanted to say thank you. I appreciate you having me here today for the time and to share a little bit about our, our TDM practices. Thanks so much, Marie and Marcus. Those were really great presentations. And I, I learned something new, I think, every time I see your presentation, Marcus. And Maria, that was some really great uh, information, especially about what's happening in the, the DC area and trends. We do have some questions coming in. So I'll go ahead and start with a couple that came in during Marcus's. Uh, we have a question for Marcus. Uh, Let's see, does FCCS work with similar organizations in nearby communities, especially when a company has several sites in the general area? So I guess that was a re uh, a question that was rewritten and asking you if that, that is who you work with, uh, that those type of organizations in your nearby communities. So, so, that, so for that example, question, Arlington. So that question was, do we work with different organizations that have multiple locations? Is that what that was? Yeah, um, so... Yes, if, if sorry, I was looking at the acronym. If, if uh, Fairfax, if you work with similar organizations in nearby communities, especially when a company has several sites in the general area. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so so we're pretty much um, in constant communication with some of our local regional partners um, in the surrounding jurisdictions. We actually work pretty closely to try to identify different ways that we can collaborate on on different strategies or different ideas. Um, and usually, there are situations where. Um, let's say if we're working with a company and they have a, a sister agency or, or another office in another location, we often communicate that situation and share those contacts with that um, other jurisdiction so that they can kind of uh, fill in and do the same on that end of the deal as well. So that, that's something that we regularly do um, and make it a point to make sure we share every one of those opportunities to um, inform different um, colleagues of different opportunities to work with different businesses as well. Okay, great. And again, if you have questions, there's time. Uh, please type those into the Q&A. Q and, and then also, I think Christine's monitoring the chat and answering some questions. And also, there may be a few pop up for you, Maria Marcus. Um, a question for Maria. How did you get top level approval for BWC membership? Like, what was that process? How did you get that buy-in from your CEO or your top management? I mean, I'll be frank, I don't know that it was it was super difficult because, again, this is what we do all day, every day. You know, I think uh, you know, learning about the program, it, it's a it's a, a natural it's, it's a natural partnership for us, you know, an extension of what we do. I think, again, it's it's a way for for our clients, for our, our partners locally, you know, the, the jurisdictions that we work with to see that you know, while we're out in the community advocating for our clients, we do this these ourselves. So I, I think, you know, that was the natural nexus for us there is is. We, we do this every day, but we also, yeah. we, we do it personally internally, right? Like we are walking to work, we are biking to work, um, we are taking transit because we do believe that is, that is what's best. Great, great. Uh, Marcus, maybe to play on that, how do you find working with all of your employers? Because you work with so many of them. Do you have any uh, tips or suggestions on how to get that top level buy-in for TDM and BWC? Um, again, I think I think I kind of touched on it slightly, but I, I think a lot of it just comes down to that initial conversation and assessment. Um, again, I think for for us TDM professionals, I think it, it, it also, it's often overlooked that there's a really large sales component to what we do. So we have so much information that we want to share. So it's easy to, you know, have those initial meetings and want to flood those 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 folks with all this information you're throwing about. Hey, there's this program. This program's out there. I think this has worked. So. I think what I found on a personal level is just taking that time to listen to see what their needs are. If, it, if we find out that hey, you know, we're we're located near a metro station, so obviously I, it starts to work in my mind. Okay, these are the programs that I can kind of tailor to this conversation. I do that that pre research before those conversations take place, so that I can kind of come in with a, a strategy on how, you know, it makes the most sense for that organization um, to implement certain certain level strategies. And from that point, you just kind of continue to build. Some scenarios you walk into a meeting and, and, it, and it just works flawlessly where they're ready to do everything that's on board. But then you have certain situations where you have to take your time. And I think that that's OK as well, because you obviously want to be in a scenario where you can, um, you know, work with each, each company at their pace. But I think the ultimate end goal is to give them that recognition, to let them know that you appreciate that interaction and that you appreciate the things they're doing for you know, your community. You know, all the programs that are in place, all the different strategies that they're doing, it takes a lot of effort. It takes some buy-in and it, and it takes work 
it takes work on both sides. So we do appreciate those efforts. And I think it's just a matter of just kind of, you know, kind of showing that gratitude and just thanking those folks for their efforts. But I think I found great success in kind of just meeting the needs of what those folks uh, may have at the time. Great. It's a great answer. Um, another question from Maria. Uh, on one of your slides, you had uh, you showed your mode split. So you had drive alone at 52 percent, work from home at 28 percent and 10 percent public transit. Um, can you just comment on are you working to lower that drive alone rate? Is that where you feel you should be? Can you just make some comments on, on, on how you feel about those numbers? So I'll be frank, the numbers on the screen were from a study that we put together uh, on behalf of a client. Um, oh, so OK. It's not our personal internal uh, numbers. We actually just put our survey out, so we'll have those numbers here shortly. Um, but yeah, I, I would say focusing on the drive alone component is uh, that's our number one piece, right? We we do have five offices. We do have some folks who have to drive pretty long distances to get to some of those offices. Um, so making sure everyone is aware that even though it is a long drive, we have we do have buses available. Uh, right, it doesn't have to just be metro around here. We have tons of bus service. Um, it's just making sure that people have that information. Um, and I, I guess the other piece of that puzzle, you know, we're in the office, but when we're in the office, we're also headed out to meetings. We're coming and going kind of all day. So making sure that we have bikes available. I'm, I'm actually, I'm on a, a personal campaign to make sure we have uh, scooters available, right? So if we can just pop a three quarters of a mile down the street, um, make it easier. So that that is our goal. You don't need to take your car for the short trips. There are other ways that we can do that. Okay, and and just a a second question on that. Do you do you count time on transit as work hours? If people are riding transit and working while they commute to work, I I don't see why you couldn't. Yep, I, I think that, that, <laughs> right. I, I, think, yes. I think you can get a lot of work done sitting on a bus or sitting on the metro, especially if your trip is forty five minutes an hour long. Absolutely, you can get work done. So yes. I think that is yes. Yeah, we get that question uh, here, too. And so that was an interesting question asked. I don't know, Marcus, if you have a comment on that, if you're seeing employers count that time as work time. I, I haven't heard anything specifically to that question, but I would think I, I would agree with Maria that it, that it can be considered. I think I think just when it comes to what an alternative work schedule looks like, I think it ultimately is a situation of, um, you know, what the what the uh, the end result and what the you know, what the product looks like if you're actually able to prove as a staff member that you can be effective in having an alternative commute option. Um, I think that that serves to be something that I think employers are looking at much differently than, you know, they were prior to COVID. I mean, I know, again, from from doing the outreach side myself personally, a lot of the telework situation was viewed significantly different prior to COVID. It was like people had the thought process of where well, we had to see these people in office. And one of the things that I would I would kind of jokingly share with them is I'm like, well, that's great that you, you you view it that way, but you know you can have someone that's sitting at a desk and you see them there, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that they're being effective. So I think what, and and, and obviously not the, the the most comfortable way. I think what COVID did allow is for people to kind of change that thought process and identify identify ways that they can still be productive as an organization. And I think that's you know really changed the thought process to allow people to be a little bit more open to the different options that they're willing to share. But I, I consider that as a a potential thing that you know like Mira said that you could count that as long as that work is being turned in and they can show that they're being a productive staff member. Yeah. Great. Yeah, always an interesting uh question. Okay, here's another one from Marcus. Uh what strategies have yielded the best results when reaching out to employers that don't have any TDM solutions in place? Um so the way that we look at them, I mean we still promote the same exact programs, but we would use some of these strategies as a as a uh a situation where we want to we want to work to get to you to that point. Um, we start we start off with with looking at different ways to where they can kind of get a better understanding of the options within their in their uh, area. So you know when we're doing that site assessment, we'll kind of tell them like these are the different routes that are near you. Should your people be coming from there? We we do what we call a uh, a GIS density plot, where we will identify where each of their staff are coming from, and from that from that from that plot, we can say okay, well it turns out that you guys have you know, 15 people that are commuting from the same area that are commuting to the office. So then we would say, okay, well, have you ever thought about maybe getting those folks together and maybe incorporating a van pool or a carpool setup? So each of those situations, you have to assess that location and identify some of the things that maybe they haven't taken in consideration. And then as you build that steam, you can kind of figure out different ways that you can kind of encourage them to do different things. But um, 
I found that a lot of those companies that we started that didn't have any programs, we've had pretty good success in adding different things on a, uh, a steady pace. And it just kind of comes down to what the what the company values. If, they, if they're in a situation where they want to implement some of these strategies, it's far easier to, to come in there and have those meetings because you're not doing as much convincing, whereas you're, you're focusing more of that time on showing them how to get from point A to point B as far as implementing these strategies and showing them how easy it can be and even offering different resources to, uh, that they may not have um, considered to actually put those strategies in place. Great. Um, Maria, based on uh, your employee feedback, do you find that you're changing up your benefits quite a bit? Are you finding anything new and innovative they're asking for? I, I mean, I would say three years ago, no, uh, through COVID, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, I we do have, so I'll say a lot of our younger employees that are coming in um, are living closer to where they work, right? So, so when we're talking about those benefits, that the bicycle benefits have really come into play more recently, uh, I'd say, than ever before. We have a lot of folks who are biking to work. Um, so I think it, it really just depends on, on what people are looking for. And I'll say, you know, we as a firm, are, we're open, right? Like we, we will talk about it with anyone who has ideas. Um, we're definitely open to it. If it's better for that, if it's better for the employee at the end of the day, it's better for the firm. It, you know, if, if everyone's happy, everyone's healthy, they're doing what they think is best, like it, it's best for everybody. Um, so not, I, telework is just been a game changer for us. I know it has for everyone. Um, that is the number one thing. Yeah, just, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're, we don't, we're not tracking folks hours, right? Like we know you're getting work done because you've been able to prove it when we were all 100% remote, we know work is getting done. So if, if you need that flexibility, we are all for it. Yeah, that has been a big change since COVID. Uh, let's see, Marcus, you had uh, some social marketing posts you showed us that looked really great. And as a government agency, do you have limitations um, on how you can use social media? Actually, we do. We do. We we, we were and, and which is which is why I kind of threw that out there as something that we're we're currently in transition of figuring out different things that we can do. Um, we have different information that we're able to post on our county website, but there are restrictions as to what what you know what type of information we can put there. Uh, we we've, we've recently started to make a, a better use of LinkedIn as a way to uh, reach out to our different clients, like different individuals that we may have met. We will engage with them on LinkedIn. Uh, obviously, there's Facebook and then there's, you know, uh, Twitter uh, that we, we, you know, we've kind of incorporated with our marketing team. But we are still navigating what we can and can't do with the uh, county policies. But I think that's something that we're looking forward to to kind of identi identify ways that we can make the most use out of. Because I think what that does is that helps to um, build our brand recognition so that, you know, those folks that we work with, they actually hear about our programs. They're aware of who we are. And then that will, in turn, allow us to start to receive more and more of that internal communication where folks are reaching out to us for um, interest in our services. Uh, and I, I'm curious to see where, you know, where that goes. And, you know, myself personally, I'm not too much of a uh, social media person. So I'm kind of learning that along the way with my team as they're a little bit more in tune with that. But I'm excited about the opportunities that present themselves. Right. Um, Christine, were there any questions that were uh, entered into the chat? It looks like I believe that is all the questions we have for today. Um, so I think we're, we're going to wrap up unless Christine finds some buried in the chat. Uh, Marcus and Maria, did you have any last comments? I, I did see Michael. Phil's note. Oh, I saw Phil's note we should talk about back to the workplace. I appreciate that. And oh, I will, okay. I'm going to take that terminology and I will be using that one. I, I appreciate that. That's a good one. Yeah, I agree. That That's you know, exactly. We were working the whole time. So I think it's, it's definitely back to the workplace and what that looks like. Um, and lastly, again, I, I would just like to, you know, kind of retouch on, on my point about the ease of this, you know, partner or partnership organization. I, I can't say enough how, how great it's been to work with um, the, the staff from Cutter and everything that they've done to help us build our program. Uh, we've been excited about that opportunity and we're looking forward to uh, continued success for any of you. Um, other TDM agencies or any any representatives on board, if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about that on a personal level, you know, feel free to reach out to Julie or her team and they can put you in communication with myself and I can kind of share um, some of our experiences or answer any personal questions that may 
uh, come about after this presentation that I can talk to you all about as well. So I just thank everybody for attending and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're excited to, to have you guys join on board if there's interest there. Great. I'll second that as well. Thank you. It's, it's been really fun. <laughs> I appreciate it today. Uh, it, it's, been, it's a great process and we're, we're really excited about it. So thank you for the, the opportunity to be here and, and speak with everyone today. Thank you. Well, great. That was, that was a great session, some good presentations, and we are just excited uh, to open, to have our opening day today and have you as our guest. Uh, I would just have to say that please go to our website. You can see uh, testimonials. Uh, you can uh, join BWC on the website, and you, there's all types of different information that we provide and again, Best Workplaces for Commuters, we're located at the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida in sunny Tampa. And Christine would like me to mention that we have an evaluation that we would like you to take. And so please, uh, that helps us uh, to, to bring these sessions to you. And also, if you have topics in mind that you would like, we have uh, opportunities for different topics and we wanna hear from you and what those topics are. And also on the website, there is a calendar of events. We have several other webinars coming up. And so we just look forward to working with all of you and providing uh, some great products from Best Workplaces for Commuters. So thank you, Marcus and Maria. And with that, we'll end our opening day webinar. And thank you, Christine Epps. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.